Cloud Academy is here to train people on the open source tools that are the foundation of the cloud. Rackspace is on the cutting edge of the cloud, and we want to bring the training that we provide our own people out to the general public. This will make uh, the this will make the labor pool here in San Antonio better. It will make it more attractive for it to move here. This is going to be great for San Antonio, uh, both in terms of the everyday stuff, like uh, folks coming into the city, spending their money here, but more importantly in the long term, creating the brain power, creating the community of skilled information technology workers that can support the growth of companies like Rackspace and bring in other companies and start their own. You are sitting in a historic place. Do you know what started right here? Rackspace started right here. But another historic thing that happened on this floor is that right in those behind that glass wall over there were the first three servers of YouTube. And I am so proud to officially welcome each and every one of you to the Rackspace Open Cloud Academy. Rackspace and a lot of other companies in San Antonio, in Texas, and around the world need folks who understand the new technologies of the cloud. And in a short time period, and for low cost, this Open Cloud Academy is going to make uh, many folks employable in our community. All right, so that was a little video from uh, the new Open Cloud Academy that we as a company, Rackspace, have uh, launched back in the building where Rackspace actually started over a decade ago. So kind of cool that they're kind of giving back to the community now. And we'll talk a little bit more about that during the talk. My name is Nikki Acosta. I'm a cloud evangelista for Rackspace. I am also the first wearer and bearer of an OpenStack manicure. Believe it, folks. I'll show it to you guys afterwards if you, if you want to see it up close. And today is all about solving the OpenStack talent gap. So. Uh, how many of you work for companies that are hiring for OpenStack positions? Everybody, right? We have a big, huge problem as a community, right? Private public clouds will produce nearly 14 million jobs worldwide by 2015. So 14 million, think about that for a second. Here's, here's how you can put this into perspective. If you take every man, woman, and child in New York City, Chicago, and Los Angeles, that is still not as many OpenStack and other cloud jobs that are going to be needed by the end of 2015. To put that in another perspective, if OpenStack had 30% of the market by 2015, and we wanted to fly everyone to a summit, that would be 19,787 Boeing Dreamliners that would be needed to fly people to a summit. A lot of people, right? There are 1.7 million open cloud jobs worldwide today. So a lot of those are definitely for OpenStack. And that was a study from Microsoft and IDC that was released uh, in December. So during last year's summit, uh, we talked about OpenStack jobs that were open relative to some of the other open cloud technologies, right? And I'm happy to say that OpenStack is still leading the pack. What's even more interesting is that six, from six months ago to today, there has been an 81% increase in OpenStack jobs that are posted online. Think about that. At the current rate we're going as a community, we are going to have to train a lot of people and bring a lot more people into this community to make it successful. You were talking about, I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Let's see, Elena. Elena was talking about trying to recruit people in Mexico uh, around in, in OpenStack jobs, and she's having a hard time doing that. And so part of the proposal today will be to discuss how we can work as a community to bring more people into the community, to train people that might already be working for some of our companies and retrain them with the skills that they need to be able to contribute to OpenStack, get back to OpenStack, put products and processes and all these great things around OpenStack. So top countries that are hiring, United States, UK, India, Canada, China, Russia, there's over 53 uh, countries still that are hiring for OpenStack positions. So truly a, a global effort here in terms of uh, talent that is needed. And the top positions are OpenStack administrator, architect, DC operations, network engineers, engineers, and Python developers. Here's an interesting statistic for you. If you look at those top positions as an industry as a whole, 
let's say your systems administrator, if you move to an OpenStack administrator, if you move to an architect role specific around OpenStack, you're gonna make on average 13% more than the industry standard. So that's a good indication that there's a shortage of jobs and that people who are wanting to bring in OpenStack talent are willing to pay a premium to have those people join their companies and contribute to this great cause. If we look at the companies that are hiring, it's gonna be similar to what we saw six months ago. What we're starting to see now, though, is a lot of users as well. So uh, over the past few months, I've been looking, and it's kind of shifted away from only vendors, and now we're starting to see people in the financial sector, uh, pharmaceutical sector, um, some of the um, gaming sectors start to hire for OpenStack talent. And the problem that I think we're having is that we're all in a situation where we're recruiting each other, right? <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> I won't call out Rackspace, but I'm pretty sure that almost every single one of you in here got a LinkedIn invite. And hey, we want smart people, right? So don't, so don't hey. So what can we do in the short term and in the long term? So first for the short term, we gotta keep our people who are working on OpenStack engaged and happy. Uh, this is the DICE survey uh, from March of 2011. What are companies doing uh, to retain at-risk employees? Um, one thing that we're hearing from a lot of the development community, especially, is they want flexible schedules. They want to be able to work from home. Um, and they want to work on really cool technologies. So what happens a few years from now, maybe you know, three or four years from now, when OpenStack is not the new hot thing, right? What happens to all those innovator types? Do they go away to work on something that's new and exciting? Or do we keep them here engaged on furthering OpenStack, right? What might convince IT pros to remain in their current position other than salary increases? And we're seeing the same kind of things. People want advancement opportunities. They want flexible schedules and the ability to telecommute. Uh, and then, of course, there's nothing. I'm out of here. So maybe some disgruntled people taking the survey. Uh, but the bottom line here is that you can't assume in your companies that your developers are engaged or happy. Even though they're working on OpenStack, there are plenty of people that are probably recruiting them every day to come over to their companies. And this is why having a unique company culture or, or having some, some of those kind of non-tangible, non-financial benefits are so important to a lot of people. Um, the tech industry, more so than any other industry on the planet, I think, is a, is a very unique uh, industry in the sense that it's kind of come as you are, right? Volunteer your best every day, dress how you want, uh, and, and do the work that we hired you to do. And that's a lot different. I, mean, I came from home building, and it was very stark in comparison. And it's funny, when we see new rackers come in, their first week they walk in, they're wearing you know, collared shirts and pleated pants. And literally, like second week that they're there, it's flip-flops and shorts. So having a, 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 not taking it for granted that your, that your employees are happy is really, really important. And so one way that Rackspace does that is through engagement surveys. So we send out engagement surveys every few months just to check the pulse of where Rackers are and how they're feeling. And if there's things that need to be adjusted, there are. I mean, one of the requests we saw a month ago from our engagement surveys is that someone, uh, like a large number of people, wanted unsweet tea. So our office now has unsweet tea in the front conference room. So that's, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, so just the, the little non-tangible things that make working in your, in your own respective companies a better place, right? You hear from a lot of the legacy sort of uh, giant IT companies that they're, they're very old school in that sense. They haven't kind of embraced this, this new come as you are, volunteer your best sort of attitude towards their employees. So here's another thing. For those of you who were here for the last panel, there was a, a really good discussion on uh, what people are doing for meetup groups throughout the ecosystem. And Rackspace is definitely giving back. One of the things that we did recently is we went out to MIT and we trained a bunch of MIT students on our dime. Uh, and we did that not specifically for recruiting, not specifically as, you know, as a marketing ploy or anything like that, but really we wanted to get OpenStack in the hands of some of the brightest people in tech. And so, and so by doing uh, just that, we were able to get people excited about OpenStack. And now we're starting to see a lot of internships spring out of that program. Uh, we're doing the same thing at UTSA. There's computer science and engineering majors who go to get resources right now, and basically they have to put in a ticket, wait for the request to be fulfilled, and maybe weeks or months later, they get their resource for a very short period of time. And so now they're shifting that model and basically building an OpenStack powered cloud to be able to allow uh, folks within our students and faculty within their campus to actually self-serve to those resources. And for Rackspace, that's gonna help us create a blueprint to be able to take this to other schools. Um, up here, these are kind of the, the schools that we're working with now. A lot of them are heavy into the open source communities. And we're working with all of them to get internship programs established. 
um, to bring our training curriculum for OpenStack to each of their respective campuses to get more people excited uh, about this great mission that we're on. And then you guys saw the video. So Open Cloud Academy uh, was an idea that came from Graham Weston. And in Rackspace, at Rackspace headquarters in San Antonio, we're having a tremendous time trying to find people to fill the roles uh, that we have open, uh, to the point where there's even you know, super awesome hiring uh, incentives for those who refer uh, folks to Rackspace. And so one way that we figured we could get around this is to be the school that feeds into Rackspace directly. So you saw the video where we actually had a, a floor out of the Weston building that was uh, Graham Weston's uh, floor that he originally had given to Rackspace. And they turned it into an open cloud academy where they have learning tracks for those categories that you see up there. And so not only is it an opportunity for folks who are not a part of tech to go and get certified, uh, but it's also for people who have maybe been in the industry for a while and need to freshen up their skills for the cloud world. And so it's a, a pretty uh, neat endeavor and a neat thing that Graham's doing to kind of uh, bring these people together. They've got support from the city. They work with the city. They're working uh, with uh, a lot of the communities uh, with veterans to get veterans into the school and to be able to give them um, access to classes using uh, GI Bill funds. So kind of neat things that Rackspace is doing that I think all of us can probably take back uh, to our own companies and start in our own local communities. All right, so now long term. I think in order for us to, to be able to fill this talent gap, we're going to have to get really good at empowering the next generation. Um, my mom works at a technical careers high school in El Paso, Texas. And I called and spoke to the principal last week. And I said, hey, you know, I'm doing this talk on solving the OpenStack talent gap. You know, I'm not sure if you know what OpenStack is. He didn't. Um, but he, he said he'd heard of it, but he doesn't know much about it. Uh, and so I asked him a few questions. And some of the things that he told me were really surprising to me. Um, first, uh, the student ratio of male to female is still 90 to 1. So it's very, very male-oriented uh, uh, in terms of the classes that they're providing are filled with, with boys and very few girls in their classes. Um, the second is that he felt really strongly that the state is not really doing enough to encourage people to go into technical fields. You know, when, when kids are little and, you, and they're growing up and you ask them what they want to be when they grow up, I said a clown. Uh, <laughs> Um, but you ask these kids what they want to be when they grow up, and it's you know, lawyers and doctors and firefighters. Uh, kids don't even know that these things kind of exist, right? All they know is that when they go to use mommy or daddy's iPad and they uh, pull up Nick Jr. or uh, any number one of these kids' games or a social networking site, uh, that it's just there. Uh, but really, it's all the stuff that we're doing that powers all the stuff that's going to be coming in the future. And so getting kids involved at a young age through maybe one of these programs up here, getting them these, these books, Python for Kids, is kind of a responsibility of all of us, you know? Um, I'm sure a lot of you have kids out there. I do. My kid, uh, when he was two years old, walked up to the TV and started crying because he tried to swipe the TV to change the channel, like an iPad. And I'm like, hey, hey, buddy, it's not an iPad. You don't change the channel that way. So uh, a lot of our kids are, are growing up in this world of tech. And I think at least for my generation, I'm 33 years old, um, when I was growing up, computers started appearing in my classroom. And it was like a reward if you got to go play Oregon Trail. Uh, in, the, in the one classroom computer, right? Um, one of the other things that this, uh, this school, high school teacher uh, told me is that uh, it's kind of interesting to see how, how the student uh, body has evolved. He said that you know, when we first opened up this career high school and we started having these technical classes, that it was the very, very introverted type of students that would come into these classes. You know, we all know the stereotype of like, you know, your basement developer you know, sitting around in the dark hacking away. And he said, it's really interesting that it's starting to shift. You know, we're starting to see uh, kids who are just really interested in technology come over. They're not necessarily fitting the bill or the stereotype of being introverted. So kind of neat things happening all around in, in schools today. But uh, there's some great folks uh, at Rackspace who are participating in like the Girl Start program, where she got tennis balls. And with tennis balls, show, showed kids how to use or conceptualize APIs and spinning up cloud resources. So really just kind of doing some grassroots efforts in your own communities and kind of enabling that next generation. And letting them know, hey, it's OK. If you want to grow up and you want to, if you want to go into a technical field, that's OK. So here's one that I'm really passionate about. Part of the, any women in here part of the Women of OpenStack group going to the OpenStack breakfast on Wednesday? Awesome. So uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on in the news lately, um, especially with Sheryl Sandberg's book. And there's one of the women I was talking about, and gentle, everybody. There's Anne. You're welcome. So what we're seeing is that 
even in careers like biology, you know, careers that were typically male dominated, that over the past few decades, the sort of ratio of male to female PhDs has kind of equaled out in all places except for tech. So science and engineering are still heavily male dominated. And so if you look at kind of the overall picture, you're only seeing about 12% of the professionals uh, graduating with those fields being women. Um, which is crazy to me because we actually make up more than half of the population. So my message to, to those of you who are, are working in tech is be inviting to women. Um, there's a, a great case study online that actually uh, Lily sent to me today uh, talking about how Etsy grew their number of female engineers by almost 500%. So it's no secret probably that women make up uh, a majority of e-commerce customers online and Etsy has about an 80% uh, rate of women that are buying stuff from their site. And so they basically created a program to basically put some gender equality uh, into their mix of employees. One of the first things that they did was they noticed that all the men were kind of sitting on one side of the room and all the women were sitting on the other side of the room, so they integrated them. So that was number one. Uh, the second thing that they did is they got together uh, with some of the universities and started doing an exchange program where they would bring in uh, students who are about to graduate for a three-month program to basically intern at Etsy with a heavy emphasis on recruiting women. And they were stunned by the results. They basically increased the number of women in their companies um, by a bunch, 500%. Some of you might have heard of this too. So that tweet on the left, any of you guys seen this? PyCon 2013? I'll, I'll try to re keep my own opinions about this to myself without going too deep into it. But basically, here's the story. Uh, there was a woman at PyCon, this gal, Adria Richards, and she took a picture of guys who were sitting behind her uh, talking about dongles uh, and posted it online. She lost her job. One of the guys that she took a picture of lost their job. Uh, the reasoning for her losing her job was her company simply didn't agree with the fact that she posted it in a public forum. I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and said, oh my gosh, you're on the road all the time. What do you do with your son? It's 2013, guys, you know? Like, women have careers now. You know, we're not all stay-at-home moms. It's time to break these stereotypes that were women at home, you know, cooking with a, you know, an apron like it's 1950. Like, this doesn't happen anymore, right? And so to those people who ask me those questions, I say, hey, man, it's 2013, you know? My husband watches my son when I'm gone. And when he's gone, I watch him, right? And so it's just little things like that that you don't even realize that they could be potentially sexist. But I want you to, to kind of be mindful of that when you're working around women, when you're at conferences like this, to just be mindful that there's women around and that they, they have a different perspective. And so if you, even if you look in this room, I mean, I could probably count the number of women in this room on, on one hand. This is a very male-dominated industry, but women are a part of it. And in order for women to feel comfortable joining this community and being a part of this community, you have to be welcoming and bring them in with open arms. Thank you. To that end, I think women have a responsibility too. You know, it's not just you know men, you know, being sexist pigs and all this other stuff, right? Um, that's what some feminists would love to have you believe. But um, Sheryl Sandberg, to her point, she had some interesting perspectives on this too. And and I think due to the the, the nature in which women are raised, we kind of have this notion that we need to please everybody, right? And I've caught myself. I've caught myself in meetings. Um, I've been accused of blurting stuff out loud because I do make an extra effort to be heard because in a room full of men, if you want to be heard, you have to speak up. I think that women, have, you have to lean in. You have to lean into the table and be a part of the conversation. You can't be afraid of what someone's going to say to you or say about you. Um, it's no secret that, you know, that women take uh, criticism and negative feedback. Uh, dif it's difficult for them, much more so than men. And so for those of you that have women at the table, encourage them to be part of the conversation. And for you women at the table, speak up. You know, it's your opportunity here to work in this male-dominated industry. It's okay that you have a different perspective. You know, it's okay that, you know, you, you have a different perspective on things. And for a lot of companies, especially Fortune 500 companies, uh, the ones that fill their boards with women, their leadership boards, uh, have less chances of failing, less uh, chances of filing for bankruptcy, uh, and they're more profitable. And so I think it's, it's good not only for uh, you guys to be inviting to women, and for all of us to be inviting to women, but also for women to speak up and have a, have a seat at the table and not be afraid of, of people judging them or not trying to, to please everybody. So all that said, here's my proposal for the OpenStack Foundation. Obviously, we have a talent gap. We all need to fix the talent gap. 
We know that there's not many women in OpenStack. We want to fix that problem too. So here are four tenants that I'm going to propose to the OpenStack Summit after this talk. So number one, I, I propose that we create a full-time position for community talent development coordinator. So basically a dedicated full-time person to help people like Elena, people in other countries, to bring together all of the recruiting efforts, all of the uh, development efforts happening with universities, creating programs that work and being able to apply those programs all over the world, uh, but really just putting someone in charge of that, right? This is not a Rackspace problem. This is not you know, a Red Hat problem. It's not an HP problem. This is a community problem. It's a global community problem, right? And so we all uh, could benefit from one person that can help kind of keep everything moving in the right direction. The second one is to continue to recognize, fund, and promote the women of OpenStack Group. Uh, there have been some really great things that have happened, uh, even and just kind of last minute, pulling together people to put in money so we could bring some female students and some interns to the summit. Uh, so companies like Rackspace and other companies kind of chipping in to pay for their, their travel and their expenses and their entrance here. Um, OpenStack is also hosting a breakfast for all the women of OpenStack. I think events like this are great. I think we just need to keep doing them. And we need to do them not only during the summit, but when we're not at summits too in our own communities. The next one, create an award scholarship specifically for women and college students to attend the summits. Kind of already blew that one in the last point. And the last one, create an online hub for community talent and women's resources on OpenStack.org. So currently, you go to OpenStack.org, you click on jobs, there's a huge job page that people can post to. Um, I would like to see a community talent page uh, that also has open source blueprints on how to get OpenStack into the hands of people in your respective communities. Colleges, universities, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, um, technical colleges, uh, community events and meetups. Um, and then also some, some women's groups and women's resources. We have a LinkedIn uh, page right now, and that's how most of us keep in touch. Uh, but really trying to do a little bit more so that women kind of have a, a landing page with an open stack of work to go and other women to network with if they want to. Questions? That was 10? Four. Did I say 10? <laughs> so if any of you want to stick around, there is an ether pad that was set up. Where's Lily? Is Lily in here? There you are. What's the address? So there's an ether pad set up if you want to sign up there. If you want to, I'm going to create a list here. And for any of those that want to get involved in this talent development or uh, the women of OpenStack programs, if you want to stick around, I'll take your information. And let's get a mailing list started. Let's get together. Let's get ahead of this, right? Um, again, it's not, it's not just a Rackspace problem. It's, it's all of our problems. If, if OpenStack is going to win, we need to, to foster talent, and we need to get people involved in OpenStack. You guys enjoy your summit. See you at our party on Wednesday night. Yeah, awesome. Take care.